the Goldwings MPU. And what I found with it so far was that the socket that was installed here at Z4 had two legs broken off in the socket and that chip is in the reset circuit for the processor. So I did a little more cleanup over here and installed a different reset generator and uh, made some better connections. And then also I found that U4, the 6532 Riot, not this one, but the one I pictured earlier was failed. So let's boot it with the quick scan 80. And this is normal boot and we'll say one, four, five, six, and it's testing. Uh, one is the 5101, four, five, and six are the three riots, and it's testing the IRQ along the way. So it looks like this board is good to go from this perspective. Now I'll put it into a game and see how it actually works. is a um, MPU. I forgot what game it's from, but I've got my RoboWar ROMs in it right now. Maybe that tag will tell us. Uh, Goldwings, yeah. And the client had taken some steps to abate some alkaline corrosion. It did a pretty good job. I cleaned up a couple things, put a different reset generator in there, and brought it out to test. Um, had to take out this dip underneath these things. You always have to take these out because if there's corrosion in this area, there's probably corrosion here too. So it's booted up and you can see it's in a track mode, but there's something funny that happens now. I'm gonna use my homemade switch matrix tester. I'm gonna press this button that starts test. And this is the credit button. This should leap to the lamp test. So start test. Okay, now I'm gonna press the credit button. And it did leap to lamp test, but what it did was it froze. Now these are supposed to be cycling and they're not clearly. So I have a suspicion. My first suspicion is that it thinks uh, that one of these buttons on the coin door that is used to, or on the cabinet that it's used to enter high score to date is pressed down because that's the way you freeze lamp test on an ADB game. The second suspicion would be the PIA here. <clears throat> I'm sorry, the riot. I'm in a Gottlieb world now that supports the lamp um, lamp drivers. So I'm going to take it to the bench and we will figure this out. So here we are with my meter in diode check. That's the symbol for diode check. And I have the red lead clipped to the bottom of the ceramic cap, which is the same as clipping it to the lower left leg of any of these ICs. You can see that's a dead short. So the way you diode check things is you probe with the black probe over the range of these pins here. Now, here's the first problem. You can see that's nearly a <coughs> direct short. And I'm on pin, uh, Let's see, 14, 13, 12 now, and there's no signal at all. Now, I'll have to check the schematics, but I don't think that's right. That, that signal is supposed to be somewhere. I got stuff falling off my table here. I'm going down the left side of it. Now I'm going to go up the right side. Let me pan back here. Those 0.7 ones are a little bit worrisome, but I'm going to take that chip out anyway. And see what's going on with that. Now I'm on the next chip over. That's that same problem. One of these I got a reading of 130 just a second ago. So you can see something is shorted here. Well, I won't bore you too much with this. There it is. There's the one that's reading 130. So that one's clearly wrong. And that is, it says Z11. So I'm going to take out 
Z11 and Z14 here. Sorry, Z14, Z11, and see what's going on with those. So I have removed Z11 and Z14. And I will mention that I, I knew that this riot was bad. And I knew that because of the Great Plains Electronics Quick Scan 80, which is a great tool, unfortunately not available any longer. Uh, and it is unusual, since this is the switch matrix I see, that at least one or more of these four pluses 7432 are not blown, because that's how they get. That's how the high voltage gets to U4 and blows it up. So I've got my uh, meter connected again on diode check. And here's the good news is I'm checking where the 0 0.025 was before. And now it's about 0 0.282. That is the normal range. It's what I call sort of like the, um, the personality uh diode check value for a system 80 board. It's always uh, around that value. Now, uh, I'll go back to this pin that was measuring 0 0.130, and it is measuring open now, so that's good news. Um, sometimes the destruction can travel from, say, this pin to wherever it's connected to, and that's how you're getting the measure, the measurement of 0 0.130. So this chip and this chip were definitely bad. I've got them both connected here to my Chinese testers, and you can see that they both flashed e eight ERR. That means those chips cannot be identified. So let me get that 7400 and 7404 replaced. Parts replaced, and I'll just mention here that I use dual wipe sockets uh, religiously for this kind of application. Machine pin sockets used to be all the rage. The only time I use machine pin sockets now is when I am using machine pin, uh, I guess, headers, like this Pinitech NVRAM has machine pin legs. So I use the machine pin socket to insert it. Over to the game now. So we're back in the game again, and after I have Replace the switch matrix chips, and I also replace the second dip bank because it wasn't reading correctly. When I boot this, this game has a characteristic sound like every game does, and I've heard this game boot thousands of times. So when I boot it, I expect to hear a certain sound. And before I replaced the switch matrix chips, the game was booting, and it was firing some of the target bank reset coils out of order or uh, more than once. So this is what it's supposed to sound like. It makes this chunk, 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 chunk sound. And that's how I can tell without a doubt that most of what I'm going to see here is correct. So let's get it into test again. Skipping the audits. I'm going to skip lab test. I'll come back to that. So you could hear or see something occur with each one of those. Switch matrix test, so I'm gonna go diagonally. Let me get that glare off there. I'm gonna go diagonally across the switch matrix to show that all of the rows and all of the columns are operating properly. Well, there you go. Next test is the dip switch settings, and it was reading differently than the three five. 242, and if you can read hexadecimal, 35242, that is correct now. Display test. A bit boring, moving on. Memory test, okay, and 1DCA is the correct checksum for problem one, so that is working correctly. So let me reboot the game so we can see that it's driving all the lamp devices correctly. And I've got one LED in the O there. It's kind of off color. But yeah, she's working correctly now. So I'm going to play some RoboWar just to make sure. But thanks so much for sending it. I think this board set is good to go.
And the last thing to do is to boot the board with the original Goldwing's ROMs in it, which I have done. And I covered those ROM windows with some nice stickers. And since it's in a Robo Wars, it's going to look a little different here. But uh, this does prove that, number one, those ROMs were working. Number two, my high score to date that I put on there went away. Darn.